Good day everyone. So on this one, we're going to try some lost organic casting. Now, a while back, I tried to do a pine cone. It didn't work so well. But back then, I didn't have a kiln. Heck, I didn't even have a flask. Now that I have a better understanding on how this stuff works, I'd like to try it again. And we're going to try a pine cone. I was on a walk today and I found these leaves on the ground. I think they're ginkgo leaves. I don't know. And I thought it'd be cool to test the limits and see if I could get a ginkgo leaf to cast. As always, I am no master, but what is lost organics casting? Basically, you just take organic material and you burn it out. So instead of having a wax piece that melts out and leaves a void, you put in something that will burn out, and once it's burned out and turned to ash, it leaves a void. Then you fill that with metal. So you can see the pine cone has a lot of deep crevasses there, so I'm gonna wanna make sure to put that in my vacuum chamber to get all the air out. However, when I vacuum seal this, I'm kind of worried that it's going to float up in the investment, and I don't really trust the base there. Put a sheetrock screw in the bottom of it, just so the wax has something to really grab onto, and then as it burns out, sheetrock school will fall away. All right, so I got the pine cone on the sprue tree and I put a big mass of wax on there because I think maybe that'll help some of the ash fall out the bigger the hole is. And then some of these tabs on the pine cone are pointing down quite a bit so I just jammed some vent wax up there. Most of them are kind of flowing in an upward direction. I think most of the air bubbles will get out but I'm not gonna sprue each one. We're gonna see how this works. Now for the leaves it's very thin. It'll be a little difficult to get all the metal in there. This is when you need a vacuum caster or a centrifugal caster. I made a vacuum caster, but it didn't last too long and I haven't made another one yet. So I'm going to try a different concept. When you have a long enough sprue, that generates pressure. So instead of sucking the metal into it, you can pressurize it by having a long enough sprue. So that's what I'm going to try. jammed a few leaves into a sprue. Let's just see how it goes. I have high hopes for the pine cone. Not so much high hopes for this, but let's try it anyway. find my vent screws at all. So once the organics are invested, you just put them in the kiln and burn them out. How long? I have no idea. So these pieces have been in the kiln overnight. They don't really look like they've done anything. One of the problems is that it's hard to get oxygen up to the material so it actually burns. So it's not burning like you would see in a regular fire. It's a process called pyrolysis. The organic matter is breaking down, but it's not actually combusting like it would if there was oxygen. So it takes longer, I think. I'm not a chemist. So I took it out to check on it. You can see the pine cone burning in there. Whoops. But it's got a ways to go. So for this melt, I'm gonna use these bronze wear plates that my Uncle Ron gave me from a rock crusher. I don't know exactly how they work, but they'll melt. I know that. Does that look like enough for a pine cone? Am I shouting? I'm shouting, aren't I? So I never know how much metal things are gonna take. Think that's enough for a pine cone?
I had way more than enough metal. Time to quench. I'll start with the one that I don't think worked. <laughs> well, I should have been a little more optimistic, but it's just a little beyond the limits. For something like that, I'm gonna need a vacuum or centrifugal caster. It's still kind of cool. Just too small for the bronze to get in there without assistance. Now for the one that I have some cautious optimism about. <laughs> that kind of worked. Missing a few on the bottom there. I think that might be because I didn't have enough pressure. Here, there's more weight pushing it in there. I should have had a longer sprue, maybe. <laughs> I gotta get all the investment over there. Yikes. This is interesting. You can still see in the investment where the leaves of the pine cone were. You can still see there's voids there. Right there, the metal stopped. It didn't go through. Interesting. Not enough pressure pushing the metal is what I think happened. It's mostly cleaned off. Parts of it look really good, and parts of it just didn't come out at all. You can see inside there some of the pine cone leaves are just kind of moth-eaten. As cool as this is, this just isn't gonna cut it. So let's take what we learned from this one and do it again. That took a while. Let's see if that works any better. For an experiment, I'm gonna leave the backside open. We'll get to see how much a difference the venting really makes. This is the side that I vented. This is the side that I didn't. But this whole section here came out perfectly and I didn't vent those. Some of them that I vented are still kind of moth-eaten. They didn't fill out all the way, but hey, that's pretty cool. How cool is that? We have bronze pine cones. Now they're not perfect. You have a good side and a bad side. This one just looks like a squirrel got to it on that back side. Now to be honest, I don't really know that it helped to vent this one. This one wasn't vented at all. This one was vented. I don't know if there's really much of a difference. Inconclusive. I do know 
to get a perfect pine cone must take a few other techniques that I am not aware of. But I still think this is pretty cool. I'm about one year in to my bronze crafting endeavor, so I've still got a lot to learn. But experimenting with stuff like this, sure a lot of fun for me. I hope it's fun for you to watch it. I appreciate you taking the time, and I hope you come back for the next episode. Thanks for watching.